Hi, this is Mark Laughlin speaking for the Ambidextral Gunfighter to do a one year follow up on the Caltech P17, which I'm out mountain biking today, and I have it in my Hill People uh, Runner's Kit bag. I think that's what it's called. And I've got a review on this from last year. I'll include a link down in the description. So, this is really cool because you got uh, kind of your little secret compartment where you can keep and have quick access to your your pistol now I've uh, run in here without a round in the chamber today to do this video and um, the reason this has become probably my carry for 50% of the time uh, one is for mountain biking it's like really super lightweight and with uh, 16 rounds plus one in the chamber you've got 17 in you know on immediately available and then the magazines are so light it's easy to carry extra magazines as well uh, it's uh, I also like the paddle magazine release and uh, that's uh, perfectly ambidextrous Also, when it's in its holster in here, it's uh, almost impossible for you to have that magazine become accidentally disengaged. I also like, I don't mind on this pistol having the manual safety on it. That uh, and it's ambidextrous, so that's awesome. Again, terrific feature. And uh, with this pistol, it has such a light trigger pull. Uh, when I'm running one in the chamber, I definitely want a manual safety to just help uh, secure things a bit. Now I do have it in here in my in my holster here. I've got one of my do-it-yourself Kydex holsters and I have a, a video on how to make your own holster, how to make your own holster press. But uh, this one is uh, Velcroed in here and it provides excellent coverage, uh, I think, for the trigger guard as well as provide, uh, make, it makes sure that the safety stays in the safe position. It's not the holster designed so that the safety cannot go off safe while it's in the holster. Now the um, I've got two of these pistols. I, I written, the first test was on the black one, so that actually the one year follow up should be you know on the black one. This one I've only had uh, uh, I think five or six months. But um, one thing I found is that uh, the slide lock lever it could be considered a slide release lever, but it's just not quite durable enough to to be used as a slide release lever. I found that on my other pistol that it uh, kind of rounded it off enough to where uh, inserting a magazine or even just a light tap and the slide drops forward on it. So um, this one, I'm not using the slide re slide stop as a slide release. I'm calling this just a slide stop, which is fine because this is so easy to slingshot being so lightweight. Another thing I like about this pistol is if you do have a malfunction, uh, clearing, um, you can do the normal clearing techniques, but you can also kind of very quickly do kind of a partial field strip and just dump shit out of there and then you know put her back together and be ready to go so that's I've done that a few times just to see how it works and it does seem to work pretty good uh, another thing that I've come to like uh, after our test on what I call the Applegate grip ratio and I'll include a link down in the description what that's all about but basically quick summary is the ratio is a measurement of the length of the grip versus the width of the grip and the more like elongated the grip is, the more that you can um, point shoot the pistol and know exactly where your muzzle's pointing. As opposed say, to a, imagine a perfectly round grip, you know, if you picked up a, a pistol with a perfectly round grip and you had your eyes closed and you were pointing it, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have any way to know which way the muzzle was pointed. You know, it'd be just, it could be pointed any direction, including back at yourself. So 
I mean, nobody makes a perfectly round grip, but there are a number of grips that are more, that are thick and just almost roundish. So uh, in our testing and comparison, even between like the Walther PPQ M1 Classic, which has a terrific trigger versus the kel PF9, their nine millimeter version pistol, uh, it's a single stack pistol. And the, the PF9 has a pretty horrible trigger, but despite that for point shooting i found that that grip that indexes perfectly that is elongated enough that where you can index the direction of the muzzle uh that the pf9 actually shot better on the uh point shooting drills now on the P the ppq i could do better with the the two-handed sighted stuff because at that point you've got two hands on the pistol and you are using your sights to align the pistol but when you're pointing your pistol proprioceptically that is using your body uh, musculature i guess locking your sh elbow locking your wrist focusing on the target and just using your index finger to kind of point where you intend to hit uh, that index helps a lot and there, if you read some books on old medieval fighting with swords they talk about the very exact exact same thing uh, having a uh, the grip on your sword that's such that you can index the direction of the blade. Now I found that this pistol performs uh, remarkably reliable. In fact, it's been, I think we've had one uh, failure to uh, eject with CCI Mini Mag. Now we do have some occasional problems in running some of your cheaper bulk ammo, but with the CCI Mini Mag, and that one failure we had was on it on this pistol, and it was early in our kind of on our break-in process. I've not had any issues with it since, so it's been immensely, astonishingly reliable rimfire pistol. Now. Now, why am I kind of, you know, I do have 9mm pistols, and I do have a forthcoming review on what's my, my now favorite 9mm pistol, but um, why am I leaning more and more to carrying this uh, 22 pistol for self-defense? And, uh, you know, besides for mountain biking, where weight is of critical importance, um, one is... Uh, you're able to put like if you check out my video how the 22 wins 9 millimeter versus 22 long rifle uh, which has been my kind of micro viro video uh, I'll put a link down in the description uh, the 22 is vastly underrated for its stopping power now for example Greg Elifritz officer Greg Elifritz who collected uh, you know gun uh, fighting data from all over the United States for many for decades I think and analyzed the data and found that in in many respects the 22 actually according to the data does a little better than some of your centerfire cartridge which seems counterintuitive very much counterintuitive um, so that's interesting enough on, it, on its own, but also I found through a uh, contacts with some people involved with writing or doing a research study for, the NATO, for NATO and the U.S. Army, and they produced the Handbook of Human Vulnerability. And what they found is, is that comparing 22 LR versus 9 millimeter versus ACP, that for hits on vital areas, there was no difference you know for example a you know hit to the head brain any central nervous system heart vital organs like maybe the liver kidneys uh the the each cartridge had equal stopping power i guess you'd say you know pistols aren't great to begin with but each the not 22 lr 9 and 45 had equal stopping power then this is kind of int very interesting hits on non-vital areas they found that they found that th the caliber of the cartridge was not uh, of any consequence for uh, stopping an attacker went for hits on nine vi non-vital areas but the number of hits was the number of hits was more, far more important than the caliber
Now that becomes important when we go back to my how the 22 wins 9mm versus 22LR video where we talk about the ability with the 22 pistol to put, for most people, can put two to three rounds on target with a 22 versus a centerfire cartridge. And um, and I show on the video, you know, the speed with which you, especially this pistol, it's just like, you know, just almost like a one of those mini guns. So uh, the ability to put two to three rounds, two to three hits on target with this pistol versus a nine. And part of that is not, not just the coming out of recoil, but it's just, you know, keeping the hits, on, you know, well, of course it is coming out of recoil, but keeping the hits on target. With this pistol, when you start, when you start, you know, firing, rapid firing, it doesn't even hardly move on its, uh, uh, under recoil. It just stays level. It's just the cycle, the slide moves back and forth. Uh, whereas a nine, you know, it does, it's going to snap a little bit, but in 45, maybe a little bit more, but the, uh, you know, so where the disadvantage might be is if you anticipate being in a situation where you're dealing with an, uh, a threat with that's wearing body armor and you know even then though a 9's gonna be better than a 22 but not a whole lot better it's still most body armor is gonna start stop most center fire uh, pistol cartridges so why not carry the 22 <laughs> if, it's, if, if your pistol cartridge is gonna be stopped by the majority of body armor go with the 22. Now the other thing is is you know the the 22 while it has the ability to basically to go through a human you know unless it's from maybe from one side to the other and, and strikes bone uh, whereas a you know your higher power centerfire cartridges they they have the ability to go through and beyond and hit other targets potentially innocent targets innocent people so, uh, so there may be a little bit less risk of the 22 of going through and hitting innocent parties, but also that just means that's energy that's going elsewhere and not really having an effect. It's not making them more deader than the 22. So now for, you know, I'm often in grizzly bear country and while I do generally carry this you know, I know that it's not ideal. I would rather have a 10 millimeter, and I do sometimes carry a, a 9 uh, when weight's not too critical. But, uh, you know, for, for grizzly country, that this is definitely probably not ideal. Although, uh, one of the world record grizzlies was taken, uh, this, I don't think it's a world record anymore, but it was like a few, you know, decades ago, uh, a woman uh, killed an attacking grizzly and it was a world record size you know size grizzly with a 22 of course you know that sounds really impressive but we don't hear about the how many people tried to defend themselves with the 22 versus a world record grizzly and you know didn't make it so anyway uh, I really anyway I do just adore the Keltec P17 I would have to say that it's probably my favorite pistol, period, uh, whether, uh, regardless of cartridge, just because of that lightweight, the paddle magazine release. Uh, I, I don't mind the manual safety. Uh, pretty decent sights, but I'm, you know, like I say, in my video series um, on Rex Applegate, we're point shooting. 85% of the time in self-defense, you're point shooting, you know, whether it's from, just from retention or even extend it out, you know, to in ranges of under three yards. And you really don't get that opportunity to go full extended using sights until you're, you know, back a little bit further and have a little bit more time. Now, I saw another interesting video. Uh, I'll have to track it down. I'll include a link down in the description. I can't remember who, who the guys were did it. It looked really interesting, but they were doing this retention thing where basically in just like face-to-face -face fighting and you've got a gun where they're basically covering up with their support hand covering the slide to retain the pistol like this and then it's kind of like a basketball player you know when they get a rebound they come down with a rebound and it's like elbows out you know and get a firm grip on the ball well it's the same thing they were basically fighting with elbows and what they noticed was you could fire as you come up with an elbow basically that muzzle is pointed right up at the head of your opponent and you can fire that shot 
Now, of course, the slide's not going to cycle, so the trick will be to, you know, fire the shot, cycle the slide, and be ready again in case you need to have follow-up shots. But chances are, if it's coming up right there, good chance you've stopped the fight. <laughs> but uh, interesting technique, you would want uh, something with maybe a little bit longer barrel like, like this has. Uh, I think this is a 3.6 or 3.9 inch barrel. And uh, so that gives you a little more purchase on it without the muzzle being back behind, you know, the fat part of your, your hand, like it would say with my Mossberg MC1SC, which has a pretty short barrel, or uh, uh, the Hellcat, which is even shorter. And uh, so this pistol, you get good purchase there <laughs> for that fighting technique. I, I've actually not even tried that except with a, a, a laser, a training laser. I've messed around with it a bit with a training laser. And yes, I can, you know, make hits on those headshots up like that with using the elbows and coming up and making a, a hit on a you know a head head shot that's where the target's just that close so anyway interesting so that's something to add to that that uh, distance continuum of fighting so you start maybe start coming out of retention you're doing the whole elbow <laughs> this kind of thing and then you can do the if you get a little more distance we now can do it from the hip and they were talking about you know doing this from the hip with, with an opponent close basically they now have uh, a vote on which way that uh, pistol's pointed so that's the whole point of this technique so it have to be some maybe a little more distance than what we were thinking before and then to get a little more distance we come out with the the pump handle rex apple gate extension point shooting and then we got the time and distance now we can do like um, that guy down the church shooting did the headshot from pretty good distance with this uh, uh, sig uh, i think it was shooting a sig 357 sig 357 sig cartridges his name was jack was jack something uh, so anyway terrific pistol uh if i have the opportunity i'm gonna get i've got now got two of these i'm gonna try to get two more just as my my stash of <laughs> firearms my wife is going to be taking one and start using one of these in hers uh, she finds it much easier to shoot compared to her uh her good old uh ruger lcp 380 you know just pretty snappy and this is just easier to handle and more cartridges more cartridges on on tap so uh, pretty nice Caltech did a really uh, outstanding job on engineering this and then bringing it at a price point that's just unbelievable and unfortunately the unbelievable price point means that they're almost unavailable it's Mark Laughlin speaking for the ambidextral gunfighter please like share and subscribe thanks for watching